guys. Can you hear me? Can you see everything? Um, let me know if, if you can hear me well. Hey, Taubo. Hey, Savi. Hi, Dread Russell. Type uh, in the chat if you can hear me. Let me know, yes, um, if you can hear me, if you can see everything clearly. We see you, okay. <clears throat> So today we're going to paint something super fun and relaxing. And I'm going to use uh, things that I've usually not, um, things that I haven't used in a while, like this, um, this is uh, Nevsky Nef Palitra. This is a watercolor set that I got ages ago, but not really used it for ages. Um, and then I also got recently this, watercolor Strathmore um, watercolor paper. And I usually use Arch Arch watercolor paper because I, I like to have more time to blend and stuff like that and have even washes if I want to. But today it's not very necessary. So I will be using this paper instead. So you can use any watercolor paper you have. Um, doesn't matter what brand. Okay. Um, I see you, hey Miva, um, Usman, Palavi, Mani, where are you guys from? Let me know in the chat. I'm going to start out with um, taping down the paper because I want to have crisp outlines for my painting. And I get asked this a lot and I usually use washi tape by the brand MT because I feel like this is, it's sticky enough but not super sticky like some um, some brands. And I'm just going to glue this all around the paper and divide it into half. Dubai, I see Dubai, India, Russia, England. There's a fly in here and this is very confusing and disturbing, not disturbing how it's called, uh, distracting, yeah, that's the word. So I'm just gonna divide the paper and I must say I'm pretty nervous because I haven't done live streams in quite some time. And I used to do live streams more often, but I'm so out of practice. Thailand, Chicago, Pakistan, Canada. So we will use, I, I'm feeling yellow. So I'm using yellow for the washi tape. Now we will start with something just with one um, painting and then you will design a, a more, not advanced, but more, um, another type of painting using the technique that I show you in the first painting. Let's see, no, it doesn't have to be a necessary equal. So I will think I will just keep it. This is, will be smaller. Um, yeah, I think that's, I don't know. Let's see, I like to have everything even. <laughs> and the problem is that the stream on my screen is flipped. So when I will paint, it will be very confusing. Okay, I will just keep it the way. It doesn't have to be perfect. Okay. Let's see here. Um, is the quality fine? Because I'm not sure if everything's fine here. Let me. If there's anything um, going wrong or something, just let me know in the um, in the chat. Okay, so. I wanted to, because I asked you guys on the um, community tab what you would like to paint. And a lot of you said something um, galaxy related or something uh, magical. And I was thinking, because I don't want to just paint a galaxy or something like that. I, um, I wanted to make it something more, turn it to something more fun. And um, so I decided we will paint something. I can show you a, a sneak peek. Um, of what I was thinking. And this is something I thought it would be fun to paint. This is some, this a galaxy lollipop. Um, and this is the arrangement where I was planning out and checked if I like it. Um, so this is something I wanted to do today with you. So we will start with the first one where we'll use this as the exercise and then we will paint this 
it doesn't take too long. It's actually the basic technique um, in blend on blending in galaxies, but just as a lollipop. I think it's super fun. Um, so if you're interested in that, stay tuned and we're going to paint now. So for the lollipop, you can use um, something round, maybe a washi tape or a bowl, or you can also freehand it, draw it freehand. Um, let's see, let's maybe I will use this bowl, because why not? Um, and I will place it somewhere half, half of the page. So it's, so here will be the lollipop stick. I'm going to trace that. And you don't want to use a, a compass or something, because I feel like when you use a compass, you can easily damage the paper, and you have this hole in the middle, and it's not super fun. <clears throat> Hello, to Sweden. So now I'm going to use these, as I said, these Nevskaya Palitra watercolors because I haven't used them in ages. And I thought, let's do this um, now. And let's see. OK. And a lot of you were saying that you have troubles creating galaxies and blending and muddy colors. And that's all about um, choosing the right colors. Because sometimes if you watch my video about how to avoid muddy colors, it really depends on which colors you mix together. For example, you can see here we have different yellows. This is, uh, it's, it's, uh, what, I don't know what color that is. But this is cadmium lemon yellow. Or oh, this is lemon yellow. I think it's lemon yellow and this is cadmium yellow. And we also have different reds. And we have different blues. And depending on which colors you mix together, you get either vibrant colors or muted versions, like muddy colors. And sometimes you do want, for example, you sometimes want to have um, this type of green, very vibrant, but sometimes you want to have something more dark and muted to make it some something look more natural. So I want to make it super vibrant. So I'm going to use colors that create vibrant colors that go well together. And you will start. So I have my silver black velvet brush. I like to use it. I usually have maybe like two brushes. I um, go back and forth. Um, this is a brush that can hold a lot of water. It has a very nice thin tip and I really like it. And then I also have water here and a tissue paper to control the water because um, you also said that you have troubles with controlling water. And because we are going to work wet and wet and we don't necessarily want to have any even washes, it's you don't have to worry about it too much. So, okay, so I'm gonna start with, um, sometimes I like to add water first, but today I'm gonna, because these colors are pretty vibrant and I don't necessarily need a lot of time to blend stuff together. Because said, this is just a small, circle, I want to say square, circle. Um, so I'm going to use this um, slightly dirty lemon yellow. Let me clean this up a little bit. This is a problem with yellow. It can get very uh, dirty quickly, but that's OK. And these, are, these colors are very uh, pigmented and sometimes very chalky if you don't dilute them with water. So I'm going to do this here. Um, they remind me a little bit of um, the Van, Van Gogh, Van Gogh watercolor set by Royal Talents because they're super pigmented, but you need to dilute them, otherwise it will be super chalky. And then I'm going to add this. I imagine that the light comes from this side. So, I mean, we will paint this in the space, but um, the light, I imagine, has come from here. Maybe there's a, maybe the sun, maybe there's a, I don't know, something shining on top. So the light will be here. And I will add this yellow to this place. So on this right side, it doesn't have to be like, you just want to place it there. And then I will add with the same brush because I don't need to keep it super clean or anything. I will use this blue. This is this, I don't know which color. I think this looks like cereal in blue. So I'm gonna use this, put it up here. 
and add it to this side. You can see this is a nice, um, um, like in real life, it's a greenish blue again now because I added this yellow, but it's, I think on your screen, it's pretty blue. And then I'm just gonna mix it together here and just add a little bit of water. Now the problem is that if you don't add a little water on top first on the paper, the paint just sits there and you need to move it around yourself. Um, so it really depends on how you want to work. If you start with water first, the colors might be a little bit pale at the end. So you need to layer them more, but I'm gonna just create the base with the paint first. So now here the paper already started drying, but that's okay. You can just go over it and reactivate it. The way, the reason why I like to start with water first and I'd have them here um, is because it just gives you more time to work on the piece, but it's because it's such a small circle, that's fine. You can just go with paint first and then just um, layer them and reactivate if needed. So now this looks like um, just a blob, but we will um, add more paint. So I'm gonna remove some of the water from my brush and use more blue. Now this time this color will be even more saturated because I use less water than pigment. So I have more pigment here and I can just distribute it and just dab it onto the paper. But because um, I use a little water and a lot of pigment, the pigments just sit there. And in, if I want to blend them together, I need to use a little bit of water. And I just mix this together. And the problem sometimes is that people um, try to make it look a certain way or try to make it look perfect in a sense. And, um, and it's hard sometimes to tell what do you mean with perfect? Can you define what's perfect? You can really say that sometimes what is perfect. You just need to allow yourself to just play and adjust along the way and have fun. Don't go into a painting feeling like, okay, this needs to be quick and easy and with no problem, because you will be frustrated. You should just allow yourself to, to just play and give, go into painting with a mindset of, I will just have fun, I will just move the paint and relax, because I really like just playing with paint, moving, the, moving it around and just adjusting it. <clears throat> um, so here. So the light comes from this side and this is darker. So it's kind of like a bluish greenish um, planet now. And sometimes it's okay to paint over the, these outlines I created, it's fine. This, uh, maybe I will just I remove some of the pigments and remove the excess water from the brush so I don't flood the paper and then just move things around. I will still want to keep this light area here and move some paint around. Keep So I, I want to keep this side lighter because the, some or something blows to this side and this is on this side, it's darker, so this is darker. And we will add more reflection and details later. For now, we just build up the intensity and just move things around. So, very, very relaxing just to move paint. Because sometimes um, I see a lot of people go in and want to paint something super realistic and feel like this is the only way to paint, but there are so many beautiful, fun, fun things you can paint without worrying about any super details or making it look perfect a certain way. And I like to play with colors, like I said. So, um, my dad keeps on pulling me away, oh no. So this is, I, I'm not sure, I think on your screen it looks really blue, but it's actually pretty green here on my in real life. I will, I will show you the finished painting um, once I'm done. All right, and 
are you guys painting along or just watching? Let me know. Maybe what are you painting right now yourself? Maybe something else. Let me know in the comments. Samita, hello, Mika. I'm a huge fan and come from Netherlands and find hilarious when you say Van Gogh. Yeah, I've always thought it's Van Gogh. And then I went to Amsterdam and I stayed in an, an Airbnb. And the person who rented this Airbnb to me, he mentioned his name and said something like Van Gogh. Van Gogh. And I was like, oh no, I never had no idea I was pronouncing it not correct the whole time. Okay. Um, been having an art block lately. Sometimes you just need to paint something, just have fun and don't think too much. Because if you paint regularly, you will you will train yourself to uh, paint, you will get better at painting, you will get new ideas after painting something. For example, you might paint this right now and then feel like, okay, maybe I can turn this into something else. Maybe I can use different colors. Maybe I can put this in a different order on my painting. And then um, you just, you just, develop this creativity and this muscle to create. And because um, if you just wait, you will feel stuck and I've been there. <clears throat> Why don't you post more on Instagram? I, I've posted yesterday, I think. Tips for artists and anxiety. I never paint anymore because of it. Um, artist anxiety is in you're afraid to fail your painting um as i said earlier if it's it's okay like you you don't have to make it look perfect it's it's like you, you're not a computer that just generates the painting and looks perfect you're a person and through painting you can express yourself you can um relax and the more you paint the more you get better at it so your first painting doesn't have to look great. It's like you put this idea onto the paper and you can say, okay, great, okay, let me see what can I do better next time. If you get, go into this mind, into the painting feeling like, okay, this needs to look a certain way, um, and then you expect it to look a certain way, you will just, just dis disappoint it, and this doesn't do, this doesn't help you in any way. <clears throat> um. I bought liquid watercolors a few years ago and haven't used them. Yeah, if, if you also it helps if you feel like you're in a creative block. Um, sometimes it helps to just um, take out some art supplies that, are, that you haven't used in a while and just play with them. It's re really refreshing. Okay, so this is starts drying. Um, now I can, I'm not sure, I think it is, it's, it's colorful enough. So I don't think I need to build up the intensity, but I will add now that just, I will just keep it here for drying. And on this other side, you can already prepare the second painting, uh, which is super fun as well. And this will be a combination of this, but as a pattern, I think it will be fun because I didn't want to just paint um, one single thing. Um, so here we will create these circles and create a pattern in space. So it will be galaxy, planets, lollipops in space. Um, and I also get questions about how you how you work with composition, how do you choose colors for your painting? And it's all about these are things that I always go back to is rule of third. So you basically divide the, the painting um, into these imaginary um, section so three lines here two lines here and then you place something that's in focus um, where those lines meet this is the rule of third it's one of the go-to things that usually like artists photographers everything even flat lace when people take a picture it's always this this rule of third grid yeah it's a kind of like a grid and you imagine okay so i will create these two lines here and this here so things that um, are I want to have more in focus. So when the viewer looks at my painting or a photograph or something like that, it's here in the sense, here in the focus. Because if you place it somewhere here or there, and it's just makes no, it's you, the viewer doesn't know where to look at. And if you just place it into the middle, it can be look, um, can be a little bit boring. So sometimes if you, for example, want to paint a flower, it's fun to just create this grid mentally, or you can just draw it um, 
and place, for example, a big flower here, um, when where the this grid mates in the rule of third. So let me show you. For example, I will just I don't know if you can see this, but it's basically also doesn't have to be like super super millimeter accurate. So basically like so. And then you place something that's, for example, you want to paint a flower that's in focus, you will place it here. And all these other uh, flowers, they will be smaller and somewhere somewhere else. So this, so but the viewer will know, okay, this is the focus. And it's an automatically the person who looks at your photograph or painting, um, he, he will be drawn to this point. So here, I will also add this circle here. I'm not sure, maybe I will. Um, Let's see if this size is too small or too big. So basically, I will add this planet here. So this is pretty, it's kind of big, but this will be bigger than the other planets. So this will be in focus. And the other one I will place here, a little bit smaller. It doesn't, let me use this like so maybe and the other will be also smaller maybe here so it's kind of like moves into this direction mm, like so and then i will maybe add one here and then one here so maybe i will Add one bigger. You can tell I don't want to <laughs> draw these circles by hand. But. So basically, now when you look at it, the viewer might, because he won't automatically look at this circle or this circle. You will probably look at this circle because it's placed in such a way that's more in focus. <clears throat> um, anime fan art <laughs> sometimes i get requests where i'm like i'm not sure i'm not sure if if i'm the right person or the right channel because i've never done something like that um the bowl is so cute yeah it's super small it even says lucky lucky thailand says here lucky thailand <laughs> all right so let me remove this these grids and I also use this, um, this is a Faber-Castell eraser, I think. It's a very soft eraser because I felt like when I was erasing pencil lines, when I was, I don't know, I was planning out something on my painting and I used something else on my Arsh watercolor paper, I just damaged it so badly because the eraser was so um, so hard and not so soft as this one. So always use a very soft eraser if you don't want to damage your paper. Oh my God, Paint Studio Ghibli settings. <laughs> I need to look into that. I haven't painted anything so um, Ghibli related in ages. Okay. Um, so I will place, I think I will place this one here again. And the other ones will be other colors. But this is already pretty dry, not really dry. Um, let me let me quickly hair dry it because this is one of the tricks. If you are un, unpatient, I want to say impatient, it's always a great idea to just use a hair dryer to speed up the process. Now the colors I have already sit already on the paper. It's that won't move anything around. So I will just use a hair dryer. I will mute myself for a second and then I will just finish um, hair drying it. All right. I hope you guys can hear me well. I'm I'm not sure which microphone is activated, but I think you can. It's the right one. I hope. Um. All right. So, and then I'm gonna now we will turn this into um 
a more more a candy like look so i'm going to use the lifting technique okay you can hear me well, awesome because youtube has this new settings um how to live stream and i'm not sure what what it wants to tell me so the lifting technique is basically you take a clean damp brush and you reactivate the paint a little bit here and then you just lift it off so i'm using is um this this um brush is not the best for the lifting technique because it's just so soft so i can just use it like that so basically we just lift off the paint to make it white again So I could have used made it a little bit darker, but that's okay. I mean the planet. And then um, I will also remove here to make it more like it's a, a light that bounces off from something else that might be here. Sometimes it's difficult to just paint from the imagination because you don't have any um, reference, you don't see how light reacts and how things are. I'm just imagining that something's reflecting this light here. I think that makes everything look more, more um, already three dimensional. I'm scared if I buy it, I'm not, it's not good quality paint. I'm not sure what. You, um, yeah, um, if I uh, can't reply to something, I'm just focused because sometimes when I reply to comments, it takes me like three hours to finish something. And if you've been around, you know that it takes me like forever because I'm checking and replying and then sit on, on unfinished painting. Okay, and now to, tr to turn this, I will keep it the way it is for now. Um, and then to turn this into a lollipop, I'm going to use um i think i will use this blue again for that i used and let me see yeah i think i just used this maybe add a little bit of yellow here and then add it um here somewhere so here and here will be these um candy shape i don't know how i'm um, like where the candy is glued together if this is how they made it i'm not sure anymore it's been so long since i looked it up and then just add it here around the shape so it's so you follow the shape of this um ball so you can see that this is round and i'm just gonna fill this in like so filled in now this is looks flat but you will add reflections on um, top later and this paper dries really quickly but that's okay like so and then i'm gonna use the lift technique again while the paint is still wet and lift of some of the paint here where the reflection was so it shines through a little bit more like it's the same reflection that we already created here and then i'm gonna also create so the light comes here so this is also we can add some reflection on, on around this square because it also has a shape some light bounces off So and you can also make this a little bit lighter just to make it more um, candy like 
basically so you can see that now there's some it looks a little bit 3d it's because the light comes from this side hits this very um, point and the other parts don't get as much light and this is also the dark area where like here comes the light here it's dark so this side doesn't get as much light so it's dark so and then so i'm gonna use now this is i said this uh, brush is so soft um if you want to have like if you want to lift off a lot i would rather use a brush that's more um stiff a synthetic brush so it can it's easy to actually scrub over the paper this is very um soft but it's fine I know she used a lot of honey Millie watercolor paper. Um, I've been, I'm switching sometimes around. Sometimes it really depends, for example, if I want to create very flat washes and very, make sure that everything's super, um, super neat and even high, Arsh is, the watercolor by Arsh is great. Even though sometimes lately I've been noticing that sometimes it's not, like something is wrong with the quality lately. I'm not sure what happened. Um, so yeah but other than that if i use something i always try to use something that is 100 percent cotton this is not 100 percent cotton but because i'm not i'm not going for um super even washes so so basically like that maybe i can also move some make this a little bit bigger I mean, like a little bit wider. Mm, maybe make this even lighter here. There's also this misconception that you can't really fix anything with watercolors. So everyone starts painting super stressed, like, okay, this is my only chance to put the paint and nothing will ever get changed because it's you can't do anything, but it's not true. As long as something is, so as long as the paint is wet, you can move things around. If it's already dried, you can lift off the paint, you can paint over it. There's so many um, different options, what you can do. So this is, um, okay, this is not blended. There's this fine line in between that I accidentally created, but it's fine. And maybe something, I don't know, maybe create something that's, something bounces off here. Also, I like to sometimes use my fingers. Um, let's see. Yeah, something bounces off here, maybe. And this is just me imagining things. I'm not sure if it's 100% correct. I'm trying, it's, I'm trying to paint this from my imagination. I have my sketch that I prepared earlier, but who knows if that's 100% correct. But you can see that at least it's 3D kind of. I hope you can tell it's 3D. So like this. Um, planet. So this is going to be a planet, but a, um, a lollipop candy planet. So. And then I think what I'm going to do also is um i will add the um, stem not the stem the, the popsicle stick so i think i will just use this dirty i think there's some ochre color i think and just add it here so Now you don't have to paint the lollipop, by the way. You can also paint just a planet. Maybe you want you want you can also turn this into um can hang up on a line here, or you can also, for example, turn it into an uh, air balloon. That's why I like simple shapes and colors uh, mixtures because there are so many options that you can turn into. Like you can even paint trees or I don't know, like, I don't know, add ears here and paint a face on top. 
Like, there's like so many options. It's just, it's why I like to play around with color sometimes in just shapes, because then you get so many cool ideas. So darker, this is just ochre. I don't know what I mix in here with, but I think this, the lollipop stick is usually yellowish or grayish, I'm not sure. But I will also lift up some of the paint here, just get to this reflection. And we have a lollipop, but um, I want to add add some uh, galaxy related items. Um, I will use this white ink pen because I can also use gouache or white acrylic paint, but I'm gonna just use it because I want to make it a little bit easier. So I'm gonna use steam dry, just adding these dots. Maybe I want a little bit bigger. to turn it into a planet or galaxy. A gal it's a galaxy lollipop. <clears throat> I'm painting my draw off stitch. What? Um, what are you guys sketching or drawing or painting right now? Someone's following th this painting. I think I, I, I recently like to paint these circles and just Fill them in with colors. And if you if you guys are painting this along, or if you rewatch the um, live stream and paint it later, I would love to see how how or what you created. You can tag me um, with hashtag lookmako so I can find it or send it through the M. But the M is more difficult because I get so many messages that sometimes things get lost. So maybe here. Yes, as also make sure that some stars are bigger than others, so it's not uniform and not so boring. Like here. You can also add, for example, um, a zodiac sign or um, stars and connect them for a zodiac sign. There's so many options. So I just need to explore. Like, let me explore. Try something out. I will use <laughs> very adventurous. I will use this very tip and see if I can add something. Oh no, my brush is too dirty. Oh no. You will. Yeah, it's fine. I just wanted to test if I can use the ink from this pen, but I think this is just a little too much, too little. Maybe I can just add it like that. Because I feel like there needs a little bit more white. So, but it's uh, not super necessary. I think it looks 3D already enough. <clears throat> yeah, the white pen is this ink, make pigment ink, um, Signo. I think I have like 10 of them because um, I usually use them and they're perfect. Like they, they, you can paint over dark colors and they don't dry out and you can see them. It's amazing. So I always recommend them. Okay, I think that's enough for now. And what is this? It starts, it start, this starts bothering me. I think I will just blend it out a little bit. Okay, now, okay, so, um, are you guys talking about K-pop or something? I'm not sure. Um, all right, so you can either keep it the way it is now, but I feel like there's this white space is just um, too white. And I feel like, because it's in space, I wanted to add this um, dark background to it. So this color stand out a lot. So I'm gonna use, I think this is a paints gray. And paints gray works great for 
um, if you mix other colors into them, but I'm not sure if it's paints gray. I think it is paints gray or something like that. Maybe it's not paints gray, but it's definitely not just pure black. Um, poor Mako, she saw as she <laughs> Stan Luna. Uh, this is Nevska Palitra because I haven't used it in ages, so I'm using it today. Um, and then I'm just going to outline here. I think this is looks will, will look a lot better. Now, so we'll keep a little line in between just to make it more transparent. Now, this is optional. You don't have to. I just just re, just re, realized I think it looks cool there when there's a, this small line in between. Maybe I will remove it. Maybe not. I'm not sure. And then I will just add this here around. So that's why I, I don't have real time videos on YouTube because they will take forever, I think. Because if I paint for myself without filming, oh no, if I paint something for myself without filming, it, I feel like I can paint something a lot faster because I don't have to worry about camera and explaining things because I do the, the voiceovers later. Oh, well, I think it will stay this way. Okay. And also, sometimes people try to outline it like that, that you use the tip of the brush. But these, but remember, you can always use the side of the brush. So if you just use it like that, see, you can just outline it a lot faster and more precise. So use the side of the brush and just carefully move it around. So I was making realistic lips. <laughs> I'm using um, uh, it's nothing to do with our interest. No. <laughs> I'm sorry if people are talking about something people are not interested in. Um, just focus on painting and don't, don't read the chat if, if it's bothering you. So let's outline this here. Well, it won't be super perfect. We're not going for super perfect. I think some, some, sometimes we go through these phases where, yeah, it's fine when, when something doesn't look perfect, but sometimes we just can't help ourselves. Like, I need to, maybe I can do this better. Let me, let me do this better. Especially when I'm, because I told you, I'm working on my very first book and because it's a book, I feel like I had needs to be extra amazing. I can just, um, can give 100%, need to give 1000% and this, this is very challenging. I need to work at this, it's very um, challenging as in, because you, you learn so much about what's, what struggles you and where you need to work on yourself. So, if you guys are wondering what supplies I'm using below this video, you can find a lot of different links to my guides. Um, I have guides on watercolor supplies and color mixing and things like that. But at the end of the day, it's, it's always um, a preference. You want to look for you want to look for good quality, but at the same time, if you, for example, buy watercolors, even if you have like 12 million colors, you want to know how to use them. So I usually don't um, don't recommend buying too many colors because if you don't know how to mix them properly, it's very can be very challenging and frustrating if you don't know how to mix them properly. So, and I think the everything else I will make just blend out. And the cool thing about this 
black is that you can mix in other colors and then it looks cool. I will add maybe something like this blue. If you add this blue, it adds this nice touch to it. And then you can also add a little bit, maybe, I don't know, maybe this pink. Mm, I don't know, here maybe. And you get this nice purple magic. I'm not sure if you can see this on camera, but it turns into purple. It's very cool. So, and because this is um, this paper is by um, what did I say? It's um, Strathmore 400 series watercolor paper. It's not 100% cotton, I think, but um, it doesn't matter here because I don't go for flat, super even washes. I go for this texture, so that's fine. And it does buckle a little, and that's fine. Just add it randomly like so to add this texture. And then because I have less water and more pigment, the pigment just sits there here, you can see. So. Maybe I add a little bit of, can with this paint, I think it's paint gray, I'm not sure which, I think it looks like paint gray. Um, I will add this pink here. Turn this into purple. And some areas have already dried um, around these, around the lollipop. But I will just blend them together here quickly, just so the, the wetness of the paper is pretty much even everywhere. So it dries more evenly than it could be. Because if this, this is something also um, a lot of beginners suffer is when there's like blotches and uneven paint, uh, uneven areas. It's because when the when you apply paint and water to the paper, that you have different drying stages. For example, some something already started drying. This is, has a lot of water, so they kind of um, have a, this uh, fight on the paper. So the wet pa wet wet uh, paint just pushes away the dry paint, and then it creates these cauliflower effect but sometimes you do want it but you just want to know how to avoid them if, if you don't want them I think I will also add this black here I don't like this white area here like so awesome idea to mix the black with other colors on the paper if I wanted to recreate this could I cover the lollipop and do the background first maybe even on the cotton paper yeah I can do this I was just not sure how I will make this, so I I was um, um, I wanted to first paint and then outline. Because sometimes, for example, if you um, if you, for example, paint it over, for example, you let's see um, if you paint it over the white area because you created the circle and then you have, for example, here a blob because you accidentally dropped your brush or you um, painted uh, outside the lines, you can always cover it with the black paint. Um, so this is sometimes uh, very really helpful to keep in mind. So you can fix it with this way. All right, so this can um, uh, dry. In the meantime, I will also have this painting and we'll see how quickly this will go. And the colors I'm going to use are pretty much this one, but I will also use pinks and oranges and greens. So it's harmonious. Um, yeah, it's Strathmore watercolor paper here. Again, I have also, I didn't mention it, I have two jars of water. This also helps to keep the um, paint clean. So I have one dirty water for rinsing of the brushes and this one for 
uh, using clean water. Mm -hmm. Some people use um, two jars for warm and cool colors, but I feel like this is more confusing and I definitely wouldn't think of what where I'm dipping my brush. I would just want to know, okay, this is dirty water. I know where, where I rinse off my brushes. You move this here. Uh, all right, let's I'll go here. Now, and I'm gonna create, I will start with this. So I move my way downward so I don't smudge anything. So here I'm gonna use maybe also green, but this green, this is, uh, I don't know what green that is. This was so difficult to, because I, I, I um, these pants don't have a name and I was very late with, I unwrapped it and then I didn't know which color is what. That's fine. I'll use this. I think this is some like an emerald green mixture, but this is an olive type of green. It's a more muted version, but you can use any color you want. Just want to have fun blending some colors. Hey, Mandeep. Let's blend it out. And also when you, sometimes you can see there's pools of water and if you add wet paint on top, the paint just um, sits sometimes also because your brush is also super wet. So it's always a um, good habit to, when you pick up water or paint, to dab off excess water and excess paint on your mixing palette and jar. So don't like, not dip, don't dip your brush into the water and then just immediately paint because sometimes you might end up with having too much water on the painting. So here again, I have light coming from this side. So this side will be darker. Here I'm gonna just use one color and build up the intensity. Um, and then I will remove some of it by lifting it off already. So I don't have to do this later. And this is also, I think this, I mean, the paint still pushes through, but that's fine. I will just follow the curve again. So it looks more two-dimensional. I mean, you don't see this ball a lot, the shape, because it's hidden, but it's fine. For now, it's okay. <clears throat> and again, if you guys are recreating it, or if you paint something similar, um, or something else when while watching this live stream or the recording, uh, I would love to see what you create. Just share it on Instagram. <clears throat> I started painting after watching your videos. Oh, it's awesome. And then I will, I think I will put the water closer to me because it's a little bit too far away. And then on this side, I'm gonna use a pink. So this is, let me see, this is, here I'm using, so I used this color. This is uh, this muted leaf green. And this is, looks like kinacridone. Kina this is how we call it, kinacridone. And again, I'm gonna, I will just use one color for this also for now. And then I just use like so. And then I use clean water to blend it out. So I have this transition between dark, like very saturated colors to lighter colors. Like so. And I like because if you would don't try to make it look even and you keep some areas darker, lighter, you create these uh, very beautiful texture and can be like a planet again. And just maybe add here a little bit darker here and move a little bit some colors here. Super fun. I cannot lift up paint like she does so easily. Um, sometimes it depends on 
um, what paint you're using and the paper. Some paper just sucks in the pigments and it's hard to remove it. And also some pigments are staining. This is also one of the reasons why some um, colors don't get, you can't lift off easily. Um, but generally, if you use good quality watercolor paper, like cotton paper with a surface sizing, meaning it has a surface like this type of layer that prevents the pigments to just sink in and be absorbed immediately. It just stays slower, more on the surface, and it's easier to remove it then. But if your pigment, if your paint is pigment um, staining, it's also more difficult to remove it anyway. Like for example, if it's dye based or something like that. <clears throat> and here I'm going to use um, yellow and also this quinacridone because I want to create um, more, more two, use two colors here. So I'm going to start with the lighter color. This is this um, cadmium yellow, I think. Just add it to this area where the light hits. And then I'm going to use, again, this pink. Outline the circle, like so. And then I will just um, blend, it, blend, it, blend everything with a damp brush. Now this pink, I, will, I want to have pink areas, and yellow areas, and also orange areas that these two colors will create. And this will be a beautiful peachy color, I think. Like so, just gently mix it together. So I keep this yellow area here. Like so, and then I can build it up even more. Thanks for having live streaming, Mako. It helps a lot because seeing you painting is so relaxing. Oh, <laughs> thank you. I'm glad you enjoy it. Mm. So maybe I will add a little, I mean, we have so much, uh, I think I will add a little bit more yellow on top because I want to make, make it more orange here. I think it's too, too pink. So there's a little bit pink here, a little bit orange. And I can also, with a damp brush, remove some area. So I will make them a little bit lighter and lift up some of the paint like so. Um, maybe out a little bit of this yellow new way here. Like so. So mix it together. You know, don't, don't try to make it like sometimes um, uh, you forget that watercolor is still still are still moving. So it's okay just to place the paint where it is and just leave it the way it is because the paint still moves and creates something that you might have not be able to create yourself. So as I said in some of my videos, painting with watercolors it's a collaboration with you and the paint. It's not you trying to force something need to let the watercolors do their own thing as well. <clears throat> and then I will add um, here again, the light comes from this side. I will lift up some of the paint from here and this like following the curve. So it looks like more 3D. Like so. Like so. Very soft, and I like that. Um, and I think the yellow stained a little bit the paper. That's it's fine. I like how it, uneven it looks. That's why I, don't worry about making it flat or perfect. I, I really like when it doesn't look perfect. It looks patchy, and there's like this darker and lighter areas. It looks more realistic, I think, when it's not perfect. 
Marcos Polish always looks great. Thank you. I'm trying my best. I, I feel self-conscious when I don't have my nails done and I can't show myself without nails, my nails done. Mm, yeah, I think that's maybe I will adjust a little bit more. Well, I think I will have this tendency sometimes also to just, I just need sometimes to stop. Okay, I will stop. All right. Are you planning on doing more paint lives while we are in all, all in isolation? That would be fun. I'm just not sure which uh, time zones are great. Um, but def definitely, I would love to do more live streams. All right. Here, I'm going to use, again, just the pink. Mm, I will add it here. But this one will be just... Um, like a very light color. Again, I will use it with, blend it with water. Like you can see here is a lot of water. So I would rather remove some with the uh, tissue paper and then blend it together. So this way I have more control and it doesn't just bump into everything together. Because if you have too much water, you can see that you have puddles, you have all these, um, this, nothing moves around, it just sits there or blocks each other out. So again, I will have it here. So add a little bit of paint here. Now this, this Nevskaya Palitra is very saturated and can easily be lifted. And sometimes you can see it doesn't move that much if you paint it on top. So if you want to blend it more, We'll add a little bit more water on top so it blends. Otherwise, it just sits there. Maybe add all oh, the flies here attacking me. So. <clears throat> And then I will remove some of the um, pigments here. So it's again, looks more 3D. Now, you, if you don't, if you just want to paint planets, you don't have to do this. I just want to turn them into these um, uh, lollipops. This needs to be fixed a little. This is a little too much lifting here. So it's kind of like here and it stops around here. Just add it like that. Very loose. Like sometimes um, sometimes it's okay to not, because you're not a robot. Yeah, you need to uh, allow your hand to be loose and move things around and see how, what you what you create. Like what if you have too much water, too much little paint, how does this work? How does it um what do you create with that? So don't try to like thinking about how to make it everything perfect. How is the perfect ratio? What's the perfect anything? Don't worry about it. So, um, mm -mm. so it doesn't look, doesn't have to look perfect. Add a little bit dark areas here and just blend it out. Still keep this area lighter. Now we will fix everything later. Like um, we will turn this into these um, lollipops. All right, um, I will just keep it the way it is. And now we can move on quickly to this one and um, do the same. So I will start with this light lemon yellow to the set where the light comes. And then I will add this cerulean blue to create a very mm, set, a very vibrant green. So for now, it's I have the cerium blue here. 
and then I will mix it again with this yellow. And then we are almost done, basically. So, and I think this way I can also create a beautiful planet with this with these uh, colors. So, and the rest I will mix with the brush. Um, Amika, how are you today? You seem so fun and motivated right now. Hope you're feeling well if you're reading this. Yeah, thank you. Yes, it's some it's very weird. Um I feel like this the, everyone feels so tense and so I don't know. There's not this there's not, when I was going for um to buy a grocery store, it was such a weird situation. Like they can't stand next to people. There are people in masks and they check that you're not too close to people. Everyone's like super careful and it's such just tension. And it's very, you can feel free and it's just very um, kind of changes the mood a little bit, but I'm just trying to stay home and just hope everything will be um, over as soon as possible. And like, you don't want to sit at home and uh, be scared. I think it's important to take care of yourself and remind yourself that you shouldn't panic and um, everything be, will be fine at some point, hopefully. And just do things that bring you joy and calm and relaxed and um, have fun. Otherwise, we will go all crazy, I think. And this doesn't help anyone. And I, I hope you guys are um, are doing all well and stay safe and stay at home as much as you can. I remove some of the paint here, so it's I didn't do this earlier. I forgot. And just lift off some here. Um, it's 1 a.m. Wow. It's so bad. Too bad if we all have different uh, time zones. It would be so much better if you had one time zone. So it would be so much more convenient. <clears throat> okay. So see here. The paint still moves, so it pushes away some of the lifted off paint. In the meantime, I can remove some, um, let's see here maybe. Just lift it off with a damp brush, just reactivate it. And then I'm gonna remove carefully. Just a little bit, doesn't have to be, like I'm not going for super realistic. I wanted to do it more magical and fun. Um, mm -mm. you only have thin paper you could draw you could maybe you can do a mandala design it's also very relaxing and then you can color it in So we have create this reflection. This is like a bounce, bouncing up. I mean, we are in space here, so it doesn't have to be perfect. I'm just um, exploring this medium. Sometimes it's it's you don't have to. Sometimes when people want to paint something, they sit there and have this idea, and then they don't have, are afraid to start painting. And I think you just need to put it onto paper. For example, it might not make sense to add the reflection here, but you at least. Um, experimented with this technique you played around with it and see what you can create and next time you already have this skill all this knowledge around it or you can remember ah yeah i did once i painted this i did this maybe i can use the same technique for um, i don't know something else that you're painting right now <clears throat> uh your watercolor paintings are helping me beat this corona stress. Oh, that's awesome. Um, all right, so 
this is probably already pretty much dry, but we can add here, this is also dry. Here we'll add the, um, the um, lollipop effect. So I'm gonna use this pink again. Mm, now I will add it here this time. Mm, here. And it following the curve. Again, this is round. So you want to mimic this as if it goes all the way over this ball. Like so. And then I'm oh, sorry. How often do you change water? I have two jars and the one uh, jar is always super dirty and the other one is usually clean. So I only use this um, maybe after one painting or so. If it's Sometimes I just exchange the dirty uh, jar because the clean jar is still clean pretty much. Let's lift up some of this, so I'm keeping the edge darker and then outline here this. Also this maybe I can remove here. Now this, this is very confusing because I don't know where the light comes from now. I'm confused myself, but it's fine. I just follow the guidelines that I created here. So this is will be lighter because I already created this reflection here. Um, and also there's light everywhere and everything reflects. So it's fine if it doesn't have to be perfect and also I'm painting this from imagination so I have the probably not 100% correct but that's fine and something here below so it bounces off the light below this um I don't know how this is called like this belt around this so All right, uh, and then here I will add, I will use a little bit of yellow, I will add the same, just use this more peachy type. Um, mm, I think this, this time I will turn this around. This will go here maybe, like so, so I will add it here. A very pretty color, so peachy. So, and I love glazing the glazing technique. If you add one another layer on top of color, you can create such beautiful effects. Now here, I remove this because it's too much. And here, a little on top. Oh, the paper dries really quickly. It's fine. What's your favorite painter? I like Van Gogh, Van Gogh a lot. It really, I go through phases, but I like different different um, artists. And every artist has a different, unique. Um, unique styles. For example, I also like um, Sergei Karp Karpatov, I think that's his name. He's a Russian artist. He also has cl online classes. He has this, such a dreamy way of painting. Wait a second, I have the eye here. Confused myself again where the light comes from. Um, and here, this is, no, this is still what? This Okay, now the paint is not super completely wet, so sometimes um, if you if you layer a paint, you want to make sure that um, the layer below is completely dry, or otherwise you will reactivate the paint a lot easier and smudge it. Um, but if if but here we're not going for perfection. This was going to be 
here goes here. So I'm gonna because these these lollipops are going to be flying in space. They face each other in different areas. So this will be here. So it will look a little bit more interesting, I think, if it's not super, if they don't face into one direction. So this will be, I will lift off some of the paint here so it's uh, more transparent. And again, let me see where the light comes from. So here, so I will lift off the paint where I already created this lighter reflection. I still want to have it uh, there, but not completely white as this area here, because it's covered. Maybe there's like, like it's um, just different type of light here. Because there's like this pink and layers. So, um, yeah, maybe I will also add here. I think this is too, it's too even here. I will remove some pigments here. So it's a little bit more loose. Maka, will you start bullet journaling? Um, I don't think so. I started once and, but it's just, too much effort to make it pretty. I rather have be. I rather say focused on. I already suffer. Not suffer. I um, have problems staying super productive sometimes and organized. So I don't want to spend even procrastinating on making something pretty. I'd rather focus on finding a system that works for me. Um. Okay. So. Ah, here, this one is the last one. Here I'm gonna use, um, again, I think this, um, no, I will use the greens here again. This is the same colors from earlier, just mixing my own green now. And then I will add it right here. Now this is still a little wet, but okay. Maybe now I will add a little bit more blue. Just follow the curve again. Here. So and then color it in. Do you like Claude Monet? Yes. It's very pretty. Like I I not necessarily like super realistic art. That's why I'm more drawn to I mean, I appreciate realistic art, but it's nothing where I, that brings me joy, super joy to paint myself and also to look at. I appreciate it, but it's not something I think I want to hang up my wall because I like to have more abstract art. Um, Cause I don't know, it's just, I like it more. Again, I will lift off the paint here. So it bounces off. So it looks more three dimensional again. So I keep this area lighter and this goes behind this here, this, this area where it doesn't get much light. Mm. Like so, and then what else? Um, here, I will also lift some of the paint below. But I think this won't be that visible here, we will see. Just the brush is so soft. Mm, let's see here. So remove some of the paint here because it was not light enough here. Okay, and now Lollipops kind of look like set twins. Yeah, they're, they're supposed to be um, planets, but also galaxies, but also lollipops at the same time. I couldn't, I couldn't decide. And now, um, let's see uh, what else can we um, do. I am okay. Let's add the stars. 
just a few of them. While the things are drying, this is still not, not completely dry. So I can just work on the reflections here a little bit. A little bit here. Okay. And while this is drying, I will add the stars. Now you can use also acrylic paint, white acrylic paint or gouache to spray it over. I'm just using this white uh, ink pen. And this Adam to, doesn't want to paint out here. Just to a few areas to make it look like they are stars. And here's like this. Different way. Also, add, um, make sure you add them into different areas, make some smaller and bigger so it's more interesting. Otherwise, it will be just too even. You want to have variety, kind of, so it's more interesting. You can also make add a little bit of reflection if you want. This paint, this pen is like I really like this pen because it's so versatile. <clears throat> Hey Ari. Add the stars here. You can also draw um, outline some stars like like a little bit like that. But this pen is just too thick, so it wouldn't look that great. Like so And I'll add some stars here. And you're almost done. Just need to add the background and the lollipop. <laughs> uh, um, how are they called? Sticks. Yeah. Hey, Usman, Mukal. Um, Let me see. Uh, I'm very happy with my watercolor paintings, which I recreated by watching your painting. Oh, that's awesome. All right, so. If you're just joined, you can see the whole explanation of why I'm painting the way I paint. So you can just watch uh, along when you when you just t um, joined. But basically, I first created the circles and then imagined where the light comes from and created the area where the light comes from lighter. So here I have this green, um, yellow, I have wider areas here, and then just blended it out and followed the shape of this uh, ball. And I just added on this, this line to make it look like it's a lollipop. But you can go back and we watch it if, if you just joined. And now we'll just add the lollipop sticks. I think this time I will make them a little bit smaller. What color did I use? I think I used ochre. Mm. Maybe I will. Yeah, I think. Now this time I think I will just add them. Yeah, like so, because they're flying, basically. So this one is like here. Then this one will be here. And um, okay, what else? So this is like that. Um, this one. Mm. Yeah, I'll go here. Maybe I will can also do it here. Or here. This one. I think this is better. So. And then. This one is hidden. 
this one is hidden. And if you want, you can, if there's space, you can still add some smaller, smaller um, planets. Okay. Um, I think I will just keep it the way it is. Mm. And now we can either you can. What about the green one? This one is. I, I imagine it's it's somewhere hidden. Goes there. I mean, I could add it here, but I think it will will be too much. Maybe here the line. I'm not sure. I think I will just keep it the way it is. And then. Again, you can either keep it the way it is, or you can um, create a background in any color you want because we are in space here. I will just, again, use this paint's gray color. And I think this looks beautiful with this pink because if you line, um, use it to outline these lollipops, they will stand out. Oh, I forgot the stars here. It will look so much, it will stand out so much more. I can quickly add it. Ah, it's still not dry, completely dry yet. So, and then this will look a lot better. Again, you can use um, acrylic paint or gouache or pen like I do. Just outline it. Mm, the stars are awesome. Thank you. So, so it's the lazy version of painting the stars, I think. I mean, I don't know which. I mean, you could spray it with a brush and gouache or white acrylic paint. I was just, I didn't want to deal with the mess afterwards. So now this, I think this, this planet stands out a lot more. Like so. <clears throat> Do you like to listen to music while you paint? Um, it depends. Sometimes I feel like if I listen to something, I can concentrate completely. And sometimes I really need to um, focus. And if I have music on, I feel like I can't focus fully. But if it's just if it's just for fun and relaxing, then I like to listen to music, yes. But not if I, for example, film a video or work on my book now. I, I don't listen to anything because I feel like I need full attention to what I'm doing, in full focus. So I'm just outlining and use the side of the brush so it's easier to blend um, to outline it. Don't have to worry about about the tip too much. So. Michael, what activities or things you do when it comes to self-care? I like to listen to, for example, interviews of inspiring people because uh, around different topics, for example, mindset, like mindset is huge. It's very important to manage that, but also just read uplifting things that help me become a better person, for example, be more positive or more determined or just yeah be a better version of myself and just also eating good things like healthy things because I feel like if you eat well like healthy stuff it doesn't have to be super super clean all the time and perfect but if I have for example a stressful day or week or something I like to buy something that I really like eating so for example sushi it's my comfort food and brings me joy to eat or yeah, just have some because if you work from home and you're your own your you are your own boss, it's so easy to just work, 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 think about work all the time. So you need to force yourself to take a break, even just mentally, you don't stop thinking about it. 
So having something to where that distracts you. For example, now I'm playing a game called um, Death Road to Canada, <laughs> where you need to escape the zombies. And uh, and Canada is like the last planet, not planet, the last uh, co country that is still alive after the apocalypse. Yeah, and just taking like care of like even just taking a nice bath and face mask and everything like that. It's also yeah, it's just like um, different things that bring you joy and helps my mood and my mind to relax. Just take my take care of myself. It's a very long um, answer. So just outline it. I think that now the planets stand out a lot more, right? Like they look pretty um, on their own, but I think with this black um, background. They look so much like they just pop. And then I think they're almost done. And again, if if you paint with me right now, or if you rewatch this video and paint later, I would love to see your results. So feel free to send them over on Instagram or tag me. I would love to share them on my profile, on my Instagram stories. I think it will be fun. Do you like the, uh, dogs or cats? I am a, a cat person. I really like cats. Are you guys a cat or dog person? Let me know in the chat. If not YouTube or an artist, what would you want to be in life? Um, that's a good question. Um, it was never a goal to become a an YouTuber. I mean, I don't even consider myself a YouTuber. It's like I feel like YouTuber is more like lifestyle. You're completely a YouTube person. I like to help. Uh, people to get creative and discover their full potential. Um, I think, I don't know, it's a good question. Something where I can help people. It's, I wanted to first wanted to become um, a psychiatrist, not psychiatrist, like a, I think it's, no, psychiatrist, like a, yeah, psychiatrist, I think. What's that? Not therapist, the psychiatrist, I think that's the word, I think. But then I was like, I first need to deal with my own problems. And then I can't, I wouldn't um, be able to, because I would have to deal with lots of different problems of other people. But at the same time, I think I was just too young to decide like that. But this will be also like a f um, fun job to help people through that. A coach, a, I don't know, <laughs> something like that. But I'm not, I can't imagine doing something like an office job. Um, sometimes I was the feeling or, or something where I have to do something where I don't really like. And some, for the longest time, I felt like it's there's something wrong with me because I don't want that. Because I felt like people think I'm just lazy. But then I discovered other people that just felt the same way. It's just that they wanted a better life for themselves. Like they felt like they wanted to create their own life and do what they love because life is too short. Um, so I was trying to do the same and I felt like, so it was so relieving, like it's nothing's wrong with me. Other people feel the same. Other people feel the same way. Um, now I'm not trying to make this, um, super perfect and you can see the areas, these areas are already almost dry and this is still wet. Now I will just blend them out a little bit. You can also, um, use salt if you want, you can add water on top to create different effects it's up to you I think it's I feel the beauty of this painting is it's a lot um not that realistic but also very loose and fun I think I will add some stars in the background as well here I didn't add um 
I think maybe I can add a little bit of, I think it's already super dark, so I'm not sure if this will work. Mm, for example, I could add a little bit of this blue here, but it's already super dry here. Just a little, a hint of blue. And here I will add a hint of this uh, pink. I mean, you won't see this now because it's too dark now, but it's fine. I know it's there. Okay, and I will just let it dry. Yeah, this is a black velvet brush. I really like it. Holds a lot of water, a lot of paint, and it has a nice tip. And it's an investment, but I feel like I have so many brushes that I bought because they were cheap, and I was like, hmm, I should, probably should buy all of them because there are so many different brushes, and I had like a million different sizes, but I never use them now. And I also never felt like using them. I bought them, and they were just standing there because I felt like, I probably need them, but I didn't need them at all. And this brush is like, if I need to draw something super detailed, I can use this brush and have this tip. If I need to fill a, a bigger area with paint, I can also do this because this brush holds a lot of water and paint. So I have multiple, um, I have multiple brushes in one. Now I also have flat washes, uh, flat washes, flat brushes. Sometimes I use those, but I don't have like m 5 million different brushes that I regularly use. <clears throat> Let's see if I can add some texture like that, just lifting on some. And oh, this looks cool. I think this looks cool, right? It's just me. Add some patterns here and there. Looks like smoke now. We are very adventurous here. We, are in, we, are, we have lollipops, we are in space, we have galaxies, we have smoke here. Very adventurous painting. Um, do you have any tips for painting bouquet effects in watercolor? Um, mm, yeah, well, um, I would use like this wet and wet technique, like the blurry effect that I created once on my painting. And um, if you mean the this this light, or, or do you mean the depth? If, it, if you mean the depth of the painting, I would use wet and wet for the background and then just wet and dry for the foreground so it's in focus. <clears throat> uh, um, do you like BTS? I, I like BTS. I'm not like um, super, super, like the super, super fan that goes into the concerts and everything, but I like the music. I think I just never um, die, dove, dive, dive never invested a lot of time into um, discovering their full full range of music and everything they do. But I watched this carpool video um, where they were singing um, with this host of this show. I don't remember how it's called. But it was so funny how they tried to uh, teach these people a dance, like this, the choreo choreography. <clears throat> Do you like the realistic drawings? Um, I I like realistic drawings, but I'm not. It doesn't bring me joy to paint to draw it myself. So I think this is for now. I think that's fine. I think I will add when it's completely dry. I will add um, the stars. But now let's remove the tape. Sometimes you can also reuse this paint. Sometimes by running out quickly, um, I like to glue this onto my desk and then just clean it with water so because if I paint this paint that's on the tape doesn't float into my painting Mako who's in, who inspired you to express your art um, I'm not sure I, I just always painted I think and I, back then when I was growing up we didn't have any social media so I was painting basically for myself nowadays it's so easy to feel like, what can I post? What will others say? What others are doing? And then we copy each other. And and it's just like everyone's trying to post the, what's popular. And then you can see the same style everywhere. So I feel like just connect, uh, disconnecting and just thinking about what really brings me joy to paint? What can I paint and have fun with? 
And then you can play around with colors and different styles without looking at what others are doing. I think this is, um, helps a lot. Mm, will we see more apples from you during this time when everyone's indoors? Um, I, I wish I could upload more, but it takes a lot of time for me. And I was, I'm working on my very first book and it takes a lot of effort and time and energy. So I wish I could upload more. But I'm, I, if I want to um, publish this book, I need to invest a lot of time into this. <clears throat> About the style, I think I answered it already. Um, you just need to paint a lot and, exp and actively think about what exactly? Maybe you want to paint super colorful. Maybe you want to paint a more and um, more realistic, more um, like forest, but not super green forest. Maybe more muted forest. Maybe you're more into fantasy. Maybe um, like you need to explore what brings you joy, what colors bring you joy, and try to paint different things a different way. I think this helps a lot. Let me see if this works. It's still a little wet, so it doesn't work that well. Looks great, Mako. Thank you. I really hope you, you enjoyed this painting session and what you painted. This is um, was very spontaneous. But a lot of you were saying you wanted to do something magical, fantasy, effects. So we, I included everything into one. I hope you enjoyed it. <clears throat> Can you do a monochromatic painting live? It would be also fun. I was thinking about uh, what I could paint live because if I will paint something that requires multiple layers, this will take a, take a while and I can, couldn't just always use my hair dryer. Now I want a lollipop. <laughs> um, make a do more live sessions. I would love. If you also, if you, you can also subscribe to my newsletter um, if you download one of my um, guides or if you go to my website, makochin.com and join the Insiders Club, um, you can also do something more uh, private. So um, so it's not like a huge, huge group. So only people who are really interested can join. And I will also will uh, update you if, if I go live next time. This was, was a very spontaneous. I was thinking about it and I was like, okay, Let's just do it. And I have troubles making decisions lately. Um, can you make a video on types of artists? Do you mean like a comedy video? Make which tape is best for watercolor paintings? Um, I usually use um, washi tape, but you can also use tape that is made for um, how it's called. Um, Sensitive surfaces like wallpaper, for example. This is so great. Thank you. Do you have any tips for coming up with ideas of what to paint? Ideas like this are so cool, but I have a hard time coming up with them. Um, I also just, it was a, a very spontaneous idea. It wasn't, um, it was not like, let's paint a lollipop. It was, okay, I don't want to just paint a galaxy. How else can I paint it? And then I just brainstormed. And you can also create, um, like you can create a list. You can also um, create a mood board or color. Like a, for example, on Pinterest, you can create a board with different colors that inspire you and things that inspire you. And then just look through different ideas and combine them somehow. Like for example, maybe you have, a, you saw a very delicious cake and the cake has had beautiful colors. And you're like, okay, what else can I do with these colors? And then you see accidentally, or not accidentally, maybe it's in your board and on Pinterest where you have a cloud. And if you're like, okay, maybe I can use the colors from this cake uh, for my clouds. And then you have these clouds and then you feel like, okay, maybe this inspires me. Maybe this could also be like a candy cotton. And then you have a candy, co a, a cotton candy cloud uh, on a stick and then you have a cotton candy something and you've started with a cake. So this makes sense. Like it's a connecting of different ideas and inspiration. It's just not like sitting there and thinking. Sometimes it's also just combining different things that are already out there and creating something completely new. I hope this helps. And if you need any ideas on what, like for example, if you want to learn how to paint with watercolors, 
and what supplies you need, how to mix colors, you can check out my guides. There are link in the description box below this video. Mm. And then you can download the app. Also a checklist with all the things that I, I recommend. Tips for broke artists. Don't draw at all. <laughs> um, mm -mm. Can you make video for, what was it? Tips for broke artists. Well, this is a very, um, it depends, like bro broke artists um, means different things for different people. Some things that is a certain um, amount of money is super cheap for someone, super expensive for someone else. So it's a very, um, it's not universal, I think. Gonna add a little bit reflection here. I forgot to lift off the paint. No, it doesn't want to draw now. I think this is um, maybe I can also. Now this is still drying, so it's pretty wavy right now, but that's okay. Mm, and you can see I added a little bit of pink here with this brown. That uh, was this uh, black, and this created this beautiful. Um, effect. It, look, it looks smoky, right? This also has a little bit of blue shining through. There's a little bit of pink here. Um, yeah. <laughs> um, what is your output goal for your art? For example, do you create knowing you will post it digitally or is it for videos yourself, your portfolio? It depends. Um, I, sometimes I work for the video. I create something for because it was requested or I feel like it um, will help. Sometimes if, but if I focus only with, because if it's my job, it's totally different. Um, I like to have a variety. Sometimes I paint just for myself. Let me, I'm not sure if you do this this way. I'll just cut it here. Um, probably not the best way to cut it. I should have used some, something else. But I feel like important thing is to not attach yourself too much to your art. Some people take it super seriously and get frustrated or self-conscious about it. Just have fun painting and share it even if it's ugly, share it if you don't completely like it. Because I feel like on Instagram, everyone posts like these super amazing flat lays. Everything's perfect and and no one sees the messy sketches, messy five million attempts to create this painting. Um, but I like to, if, if I know this is a little bit crooked, but okay. Um, but sometimes I just make, make time to paint just for myself and not necessarily share it. Maybe I share it sometimes, but I'm not, po not start painting with the thought, okay, this is something that goes onto my Instagram or YouTube. It's super refreshing. What brushes would you recommend for beginners? I have a whole guide on that. Maybe I should use a ruler for that. Um, maybe like this. The guide is, um, you can find the guide link in the description box below. Um, okay, this is not 100% 90 degree. Oh, well, I will just cut it here. Never mind. I, but I like having this frame around, around the painting. So I feel like this puts the painting more in focus, like it's, framed, it's not a lot, it's more, how it's called, um, it puts the focus on the painting, um, and the painting stands out, it doesn't get lost in, on the paper. So if, for example, you don't like your art, try to um, keep this frame around it, because I feel like sometimes things look a lot better when they're in frame, and sometimes, if you paint something and they don't like it, sometimes it looks very awesome on, for example, a pillow or something like that. A pillow or as a wall art or like a curtain, t-shirt, something like that. When you put it onto something else, like I have a video on um, from art to product or something like that. And some weird random areas for my painting look so amazing on just a pillow, for example. Um, but it doesn't look, for example, not the as great just on paper. So it's always context. 
cut it off. Like so. From cutting ASMR. This is, let me remove this mess here. Well, it's not that uh, tidy, but okay. Let's not pretend I'm super neat. Um, yeah, this is the, <laughs> the cutting sound is nice. You need ASMR, like painting and ASMR. I don't know how to paint ASMR in watercolors because you don't really hear the brush. Drawing, okay, but uh, painting, I don't know. But it's fun. How important are art fundamentals? Um, the basics are, are um, important, like for example, the rule of third, how to mix colors and stuff like that. But it, you don't have to like study the whole art fundamentals to start. Yeah, the scissors are from Chibo with hearts, aren't they cute? I can create a flat lay with that and pretend I'm, I know how to do flat lay. Um, I really hope you like this painting, and if you just joined, um, uh, I hope you will recreate it and share it with me on Instagram or um, Facebook, Twitter, somewhere. Um, and I can also show my first attempt. Oh, I can show you what I was thinking first um, to give you some more ideas. If you like this idea, but you don't, you want more. So I have created a small small thumbnail painting. You can see it's very messy because I didn't pay attention to how I was outlining it. Um, so you can turn it into a popsicle, you can turn it into a planet, you can turn it into uh, an air balloon. I, I did this here. And if, you, if you're unsure, you can always make these little thumbnails. I also like to have, where is this? I think I, I don't know where it is, but I sometimes create, um, yeah, I don't know where it went. I create some small um, small thumbnails like you can just literally create a small square and plan out your paintings and maybe even um, plan it um, like plan out where you place something. Yeah, I always create small thumbnails because I because sometimes it's just you can test out so many different paintings at once without painting them. Where is this? Ah, oh, here I can show you. Like here, for example, I have this. I was just a mess because I was didn't was not sure where we should place all these circles. I try have these. You can see I have these this grid, but I was like, mm, I don't know. And I tried again. I was moved moved the circles around. So I highly recommend that. Um, and this was my very first um, attempt. I also here added water on top to create this cauliflower effect on purpose. Um, I also kind of like, you can see this is, this is even more three-dimensional and more uneven. And I really like that. Yeah, try too hard to make it even, even though I didn't want to. This is more, um, uh, more, uh, messy, but I really like this. I actually like more, this more than this final, because I didn't pay attention to how I was painting. It was a quick sketch. And I usually, this works better when I don't, um, try to make it perfect. I just paint something quickly. It looks better than that when I actually sit down to paint. Um, yeah, so these were my attempts. So it's fine. Like you don't have to sit there um, with a blank piece of paper and thinking, okay, let's create a beautiful, perfect painting and then stress about it. It's okay. Just start with a sketch. Start with a messy painting. Um, try again, see maybe you'll like a different combination better with different colors and something like that. So yeah. Um, please make or make some more stay-at-home painting videos. Um, if you guys have any um, any ideas, like any, any suggestion, what you'd like to see, um, you all can always comment uh, below my videos or on Instagram. Please make other videos like these. 
Uh, do you sell your paintings? I have Fun Society 6 and Red Bubble Shop, but I don't really um, promote them or anything or upload more often there. Yeah, exactly, Anna. Often when you are lo just loosely painting and don't worry about it, it looks so much better. Exactly, like you, because you don't have this pressure. Okay, this all should be a become a picture for Instagram, or this should be become uh, should be a video for YouTube. It's just like okay, let me paint a little bit and have fun, and then it looks a lot better because you don't try so hard. Like when you try something super hard, it won't turn out that great. <clears throat> Do you drink coffee? Yes, I love coffee. Um, okay, so again, these are the ideas. You can um, use like the texture you can try out. You can also have this background more in black. Maybe you don't want to make it black. Maybe you can also make a super, super dark blue. Um, uh, yeah. Do you drink caffeine when you paint? Um, I just drink coffee when I feel like drinking coffee like in the morning. I don't pay attention to if I, I, I make, I'm, I'm, I mean, I don't drink too much coffee. I try not to drink too much coffee if I have to paint super precisely or something like that. Um, yeah. Uh, mm -mm. Yeah, cats. Um, so if you guys have any more qu like questions, um, I can end the video live stream here. So if you guys are watching the replay, you know here, these are the ideas for you. But if you want to uh, have more questions, we can hang up, hang out for 10 more minutes and I can answer some of your questions. Um, and then I will just cut out the ending so it doesn't come too long. So like it needs some more colorful, I don't know. <laughs> now I'm starting to create a flat lay. Isn't this beautiful? Uh, uh, uh um your hand is steady nice yeah it's 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 like you if you tr try to like sometimes if you focus too much and like try to like very to um move your brush very very carefully like stiff it's it's mo mostly it won't be super even just need to be like more loose and then work better mm. Thank you for your awesome videos. Uh, thank you. I'm glad you like them. Um, please do a day in my life video. Well, this is a very boring video because I'm usually just working on stuff. Um, galaxy on my wall. Ooh. I did a galaxy on my um, umbrella. I used fabric paint and I created a, a, a galaxy on the umbrella. It's still on my channel. You can check it out. <clears throat> Can you try more Indian art supplies? Problem is that it's very difficult to get them. And I paid like 10 times the price that it is in India for the sets that I got last time. Um, what is your favorite movie TV or TV series on Netflix? I like I Big Bang Theory. I watched it like 5 million times. Friends, uh, Gilmore Girls. Um, what was that? Um, what's the other one? Uh, um, Big Bang Theory, I also said, I think. Um, yeah, just like the classics. Um, where do you store your finished paintings? I usually have it in um, like a fold, not folder, I like I put them on top of each other on my shelf or in one of my drawers. Um, so I don't have like a, like a, I, I I should probably get some kind of folder or something. Like I used to have a folder when I was in the school in my art classes. Um, where do you come from? I was born in Russia, but I'm living in Germany right now. Um, are your art supply shops closed? Yeah, the local shops, like physical shops are closed, but you can still order from different um, art shops. <clears throat> are you are you working from living room or office? I'm living from home. Uh, are you going to do something with Lars or not? You mean Lauvan? Maybe. I I think I was I would plan to do something like last year, but I, I think he was busy or something. Is cheap watercolor okay? It really depends what you what you mean by cheap. I would always go for brands that that are known. In good quality because if you have paints that are super chalky 
you can't you can't they are not transparent they don't blend nicely um Do you have favorite paper type brands? Um, I switch sometimes, depends on what I want to paint. I like Arch watercolor paper for, because it stays a lot lo wet longer. For, so for landscapes or when I want to need more time to work on something. Um, but like Arch, uh, honeymoon, like cotton paper usually. And um, now I'm trying to different types of papers from Kensen now and Strathmore. I think Strathmore, Kensen, and Arch, like it's one company now. Um, they're owned by the same people. Um, Koi, I think they're very, I think I personally didn't like them. I think they were chalky last time I checked. I'm not sure. I I, I have my go to's and sometimes I try new new like I go to my um old paints that I haven't used in a while, like this new sky palitra I haven't used in like a, a forever. Um, mm -mm. This is not a question, but I'd love to see whatever you paint as long as you enjoy painting. And, oh, <laughs> that's so sweet. Do you think the right hemisphere drawing is good? What do you mean? Um, where are you living and where are you from? I am from Germany. I was born in Russia, but I'm living in Germany. Uh, well, I was curious about an update on your art room makeover. Do you still use it? Uh, yes. Um, let me see if uh, no, I can remove it. Um, yeah, it's still pretty much the same, so nothing changed. Have you ever tried soft pastels? Yeah, I did, but um, it's it's so messy sometimes, and I like now I focus on getting better in watercolors, so I don't want to switch things around too much. Do you have a current fa current favorites? Current favorite set of paints. I know you use Schmincke often, but curious if you have another. And do you like two paints or pans more? It depends. Sometimes I like, like, um, I have my go-to like Schmincke. Yes, I also have the tubes from Schmincke, Daniel Smith tubes. Um, sometimes lastly, I was using this Van Gogh, Van Gogh set. Now this in the Sky Palette. I think they are great, but it, again, they are very, very. They can be very chalky if you don't dilute them with paint. Um, but they are great. Like I don't want. I I'd rather invest a little bit more in in good quality paints um, than cheap ones because I have cheap watercolors and they're just standing like in my drawer and they're just taking up space because they're not great. Um, what did you study? I studied cultural stu studies. Um, stay home and safe. Yes, Paul Rubens. Um. I have a set, I think, but I don't like the like don't like. No wait, I have the pen set, yeah, and the, it's so so bothersome to use them sometimes. I it's just I have a very I have a lot of sets, but um, I always have my go tos. Um, so I need to paint more with Paul Paul Rubens to say something about it. I haven't painted a lot with them. I like surrealism, yeah. Character design, uh, I used to. I used to have taught artists. I had art lessons in school. I also did my A-levels in art, but everything um, I taught myself. And I think I think that there was conversation about what, is the, what does it mean to have uh, you are self-taught? Because even if you study art, you still have to study yourself. Like you still have to learn and paint yourself and do everything yourself. You only get the knowledge. And then you, you need to learn it by yourself. So I think self-study at home by yourself or going to school uh, can, at the end of the day, it's pretty much the same because you still have to pay, learn yourself. The, the teacher doesn't put the knowledge into you just because you go to school. Um, please do a sunset or northern light scenery. I did a lot of, of those, I think. I wanted to switch things up so I have, have this lollipops. Um, mm -mm. Can you please paint a rainbow scenery next time? That would be also fun. Uh, how much time do you spend on making art in a day? It depends. Sometimes, um, for example, now I'm working on my book. And for, at the same um, at the beginning, I, I tried to paint every day. And then I realized I couldn't switch between painting and doing something else. So I decided I will focus two days fully on painting. And then I will do something else like working on videos or 
um, because sometimes if I say, okay, I will paint just one hour, it sometimes take, I paint longer than that. So I like rather have a dedicated time where I just paint and focus on that. But it changes sometimes. It depends on how I feel. But I, I definitely don't pay every don't paint every day. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. Um, but even if you just sit down for one painting session and you sit there for like two hours and paint multiple paintings, you get a lot better than just painting a little bit um, each day. Um, I think my voice is going away soon. I love your style and keep making art and keep being you because you're amazing. Oh, thank you, Maddie. How did you start posting your art on Instagram? I just started. Just posted something, started. Don't think about it too much. Sometimes we overthink and over strategize or we complicate things and then we just don't do anything at all. Just just do, just do something, post something, paint something. Um, yeah. Mm, it's kind of weird. Like I can, you only see my hands, so it's weird. Sketchbook for beginners. Uh, if you just want to draw, I'm not an expert on drawing sketchbooks. I like um, the Hannah Mueller watercolor book, for example. You can sketch there, but you can also use it for watercolors, acrylic, or anything. What do you mostly paint? I like landscapes a lot, or just sunsets and things like that. It's just I like to I like to express myself through my art and relax. I don't want to focus on super detailed things. What's one of your favorite art quotes? Art quotes? Um, I don't know if it's art related quote, but I think one of the latest that I really liked that I learned from, I don't know who said that. I think it's Marie Forleo said it once. She said, you either win or you, or you learn. Like there's no failing. It's just you either uh, win, you create something beautiful, or if it doesn't turn out beautiful and you don't like it, you learn something like you learned, okay, I shouldn't mix this color with this. Okay, I should pay attention more to this and I can do this differently. So there's always, you don't fail, you always learn. Even when something doesn't work out, you always learn from it and it's valuable. You can't learn anything if you don't fail. Um, so there's no failing actually. Mm, yeah. Please send what paint you use. I have a whole guide on watercolor supplies. And I have a lot of different um, things that I recommend. What's the best way to go about painting small details with watercolor? Um, uh, small details with watercolor. Um, that's a difficult question just to answer that because um, don't get too caught up in small details. Sometimes you, uh, you want to add too many details. Um, it's fine to have the overall painting for example if it's a landscape you don't have to paint like all the flowers it's fine to add just five of 500 and use make sure you have a fine tip brush to add the, the details um yeah i don't know it needs to be more specific i think the question whenever i use watercolors it looks nice when it's still wet but it dries patchy i don't know if that's how watercolor works or if i'm doing something wrong can you tell me what i'm doing wrong you should definitely check out my guides. You can find the links in the description box below where I talk about why this happens. Like it's, it's sometimes it's the paper, sometimes it's the water, sometimes it's the paint, like everything you need to, everything needs to be in, in a harmonious balance. Like um, the paper needs to, needs to be able to uh, balance all the water. Um, but also because for example, if the paint, if the paper dries quickly, you have areas that are wet, dry, and then they create these patchy effects. So you want to have, for example, paper that can um, absorb the paint evenly and dry evenly, or you also need to pay attention to how much, where the wetness of the paper, where you apply the wet paint and stuff like that. So there's a lot of to pay attention to, but it's um, sometimes it's very like, definitely the paper sometimes because it doesn't. If you use, for example, very cheap watercolor paper, it just doesn't dry evenly at all. It's just dry. It soaks up water here here in these areas and then it's just dries patchy it doesn't dry evenly because it doesn't absorb the paint evenly um do you like holbein watercolor i don't think i have holbein watercolor 
do a collab with whom? And uh, what's the least favorite thing to paint? Um, I don't know, something super, super detailed, I think, just in general. I mean, it's um, just sometimes takes too, like, too long and I just want to sit there and, and enjoy like even just messing up, messing around with paint. Do you know anything about animation? I animated a few things on Procreate, if this counts, like um, like uh, uh, just uh, moving words or moving elements. Do you have any tips for improving patience with art? Please also know how much happiness you bring. Oh, um, uh, do you have any tips on improving patience? Um, I think it patience comes not only it's important not only in painting but in, in life in general. So I think painting with watercolors can teach you a lot about that because in life you need to be patient. Nothing comes easy. Like in Instagram, you if you look at everyone what who people doing all sorts of things and you feel like wow this person achieved everything and it feels like in just two days but actually this person was working 20 years on that and you just you didn't see it and it feels like everything people achieve everything in like super quickly and you don't see the behind the scenes time and effort you put into it so it's just you need to always co constantly remind yourself that it takes time you need to be patient nothing comes easy that's worth uh, achieving because uh, like if you want to achieve something in life, you need to become this person first that can actually handle all this, what you want to achieve. So working on yourself and thinking, working on the, in your mindset and re really reminding yourself every day because it's, it's not like, OK, now today I will be patient and then to and then it's all and you hope it will stick. You need to remind yourself and like even write it down today. I will focus on being patient. I will focus on when I paint. I will bring the joy. I will be joyful. I won't stress about perfection, and and just work on on yourself like that. I hope this helps. Like it's 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 yeah, it's like a everyday training to be patient. Just breathe, and there's no hurry. Uh, uh, um, mm -mm. sometimes I paint with the wet technique, and the paint doesn't spread fully. But by the will of you, make all. Oh. Um, Mariam, uh, yeah, it depends on how much water you have on the paper and your brush and the pigments and stuff like that. So sometimes the paint also just doesn't want to spread because it's so chalky. Um, I guess what I'm asking is on watercolor painting should, I, uh, oh, sorry, it went away. Um, where is it? How should I do the small details should i use like colored pencil or gel pens what media is the best to use small details um sometimes artists like to use masking fluid for example to just for example if you want to have certain areas with flowers some artists use a masking fluid to cover these areas and then later they can paint on top um or they leave it out like usually if you plan your painting you can you have different options. You either use masking fluid to remove to cover all these areas where you want to add detail. So so you can focus on um, all these washes and bigger areas, and then you can remove the, the masking fluid and then add the details. Or you can use, for example, gouache and mix it with watercolor. So the watercolors become opaque, and then you can add um, uh, more details on top. That that is more like I mean gouache. I wouldn't say gouache and watercolors it would be made like you consider as a mixed media because gouache is similar to watercolors. It's just opaque, um, and it's a little bit more chalky and everything like that. But it's still a water soluble uh, medium. Um, but yeah, you can, it depends. You can also use pencils top. It's it depends on how you want to make your painting look like. Because some artists like to use. Um, colored pencils to add details. Some others use masking fluid. I think it depends on your style. You can experiment really and then see what you like the best. Mm, please do a collab with Chloe Rose. Maybe that will be fun. Yeah. What part of Russia are you from? I'm from, I was born in Leningrad, like St. Petersburg. And I, if I missed it, I'm not really. I, I went there two, two years ago, I think. It was really beautiful. But I like living in Germany. Um, will this life be saved on the channel? Yes, you can rewatch it later. 
A burst and watercolor is nice. Uh, I don't know. I haven't. I don't have them. I think uh, says, uh, I think my paper's not up to mark. Maybe that's why I dress patch. Do you know any cheap yet good paper for watercolors? Um, there are so many. It's like so difficult to say. Um, but I, I usually, if you want really, really even um, washes, then definitely look into 100% cotton paper. And you can, for example, buy a huge sheet and then cut it to size. You don't necessarily have, for example, this, the, the like pads like the, these or if when the ones that are glued around the edges they are more expensive a lot more expensive than just if you buy just a loose sheet then cut it to size so now whenever i find a good paper that i like for example orange um and sometimes also use winsor newton cotton and um winsor newton cotton paper i also buy the sheets and then cut it to size because it's a way way cheaper than buying a, a pad or a block mm. Is it okay in Germany? Um, yes, it's, everyone stays at home as much as they can. We need to stay, uh, we can't group. We don't, we can't, we are not allowed to group. Only two people are allowed to stay together uh, in one place and everyone else needs to go away. So it's kind of very um, strange right now. And they also in the shops, they make sure that not everyone goes into the shop. So they control how many people go in and out. So it's very tense, but people, it's very quiet outside. Oh, this fly is yeah, still here. Um, what is the best watercolor paint brush? There's so many. I like I like this velvet, silver black velvet brush. It's a very nice brush. And also Da Vinci Casaneo mop brush. I like I like them both. Can leaving brushes wet after using them ruin them? Um, they can only ruin them if you, for example, put them wet into a jar with the bristles da um, down. Like so that when they dry, they're like this. So this will damage them. So, uh, so when you wash, uh, clean them and pat them dry a little bit, make sure you make this fine tip again. And then you let it dry you like this. We're hanging them downwards. And then if they're fully dry, you can put them into a jar with the bristles up. But if they're wet, it's fine. You can just you just need to make sure you make this fine tip and let it dry like this. Uh, Arsenia watercolor is good. Um, I have I think the small one. It's good, but I think they're not super super pigmented. But if you mean the tube ones, I haven't tried them out yet. How expensive are good quality gouaches? Um, I only painted. I used Schmincke and Winston Newton, and they were when that that weren't that cheap and also not that expensive. Depends. Um, can you do a collab with Emily Artful? Um, I think I, I I don't I'm not sure if she knows about me. I don't know who if she knows who I am. So we also not like don't talk to each other. So I'm not sure. Maybe I could reach out. It'll be fun. Um. Is it important to paint perfectly? Absolutely not. This is who's like can can you even describe what perfect is? Like it's something that you can you can even describe what perfect is. It's very abstract. So rather focus on on like elemental stuff like composition, colors, and that you actually enjoy. It doesn't have to look perfect. Like this, for example, someone would say, "Oh gosh, this looks awful." Some, someone would say, wow, this is beautiful. And as long as it's like so, so um, individual, like don't focus on what others will say, but also don't stress too much about making it look something perfect. As long as you enjoy it and like it and brings you joy, then it's all, all that matters. Because um, perfect, like what is per even perfect? You can't, you can say, okay, I want to paint five flowers. You can achieve that, but what is perfect? Perfect, perfect combination. What is perfect combination? What are perfect colors? What, how, how do you define that? I'm a beginner. Can you tell me what gouache do? So gouache, I have here gouache. Um, this is Academy gouache. It's it's an opaque watercolor. Um, no, so opaque. Yeah, it could, it could say opaque watercolor, and it's 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 
um, similar to acrylic, but not. It's um, you can reactivate it with water. It's opaque, so you can layer them, and you can also use it to mix it into your watercolors. For example, I have here um, this green. Well, this brush is not great for uh, for gouache because it's so soft. But for example, you can mix it together like so. And then you can we'll turn it a little bit pastel. So you can use it, for example, if you want something pastel looking or like, let's see, for example, here. And then you can paint over black like so. You can even like so. But you can also reactivate it later because it's not like, for example, acrylic, if it dries, it stays, you can reactivate it, but, but gouache you can. And using wash in combination with um, uh, watercolors, it's fun. Do you like drawing people? Um, I usually don't draw people. I used to sometimes. So you can also just add, let me actually add some stars. I mean, I have this green here, but here, oh, it's a little bit thick. Have the star here. Mm. You can also like blend it to get blend it in. So I see some people use white gouache with acrylic uh, with watercolors to add um, create uh, how it's called um, clouds. What's the word? So so it's very fun. We can combine the, those two. Or add, like, for example, here, if you feel like, okay, this area is not bright enough, let's add me, me a little bit of this here. Or here, you have this problem that, I mean, it's not super, super opaque sometimes because you need to experiment with how, how, much, um, how much you use. So, yeah. Um, what can be used instead of masking tape? Oh, that's a good question. I don't know. There are different tapes. So maybe if you don't want to use any tape, then I don't know. Good question. Or you can just outline it. Oh, you can also use mask, uh, masking fluid, for example. You could add masking fluid around a white crayon, maybe, or, um, or just paint in line, but it's more challenging. Why is soft brush wet for gouache? Um, it's not bad, it's just that the gouache is thicker and you want a brush that can can push the paint. If the brush is too too soft, it's it's more difficult to distribute the paint. So you would rather have, because for example, if you paint with acrylics, acrylic is a heavy, heavy medium and you want to have uh, brushes that can move this paint. Um, and with watercolors, you have softer brush because watercolors is such a, like such a delicate medium and watery, and you want to have a soft brush to distribute the paint. And you don't want to scratch it with a heavy uh, like a um, uh, brush with very hard, how it's the word like very thick and scrubby bristles. Um, so I would rather for a gouache, I would rather use something that's more like a synthetic brush. It's a little bit stiffer because then you can distribute the paint a lot easier. Maybe then later, if you want to uh, blend out something, then a, a soft brush would work a great, great as well. But for distributing, I think it will be more difficult. <clears throat> um, okay, so five more minutes and then I need to head out my voice is, voice is going. Um, can gouache and acrylic be paired? Um, well, you can, you probably can. Um, for example, if you want areas that, that are, shouldn't be reactivated again. Um, but I don't know why would you want to com combine them, but, but yes, you can. 
Um, can uh, please do a collab with Chloe Rose or a drawing with waffles? That would be awesome because a lot of people would love that. Yeah, it will be fun. Um, what about trying different medium? Is it bad or good? It's. I actually did a video about where I painted one thing with different mediums. Um, and it was super fun because sometimes if you paint with some with watercolors for for too long or drawing for too long, sometimes it, you can feel like you're stuck and uninspired. So when you feel like you're in a creative rut, you can switch your painting medium completely and paint something that you usually don't use or something that you haven't painted in a while. It's really refreshing. And but if you want to be good at something, then I would rather focus on something more. For example, I want to be better, become better in watercolor. So I, mo my, the majority of the time I paint with watercolors. Um, so if I would switch too much, I wouldn't get better that quickly. I was always watching my first Winsor and Newton Cotman set when I saw you are streaming. Aw. Um, so you have a whole two and a half hours to rewatch. <laughs> How do you prevent an area from being reactivated when painting over it? It's a different medium. Um, you need to make sure it's super dry, like the layers dry, and then you don't want to heavily scrub over it. For example, if you're in watercolors, you don't want to use a brush that is super, like a stiff brush that's um, hard, hard bristles, because then you would scratch the paper and the pigments could easily um, uh, be reactivated and moved. So if I have a so make sure you have the layers uh, dry and you use a very soft brush in case of watercolors and gently go over it. You don't want to go back and forth and yes, then you would lift off the paint and reactivate it. Are birds in their watercolor good? I don't know, I, have, I don't have them. Have you ever used paint, paint pen like Posca pens? Yes, but I have problems with them because they're sometimes so streaky and I don't have the, also don't have the right paper. Sadly. Are you ever nervous before videos or live streams? Yes, I was actually very nervous because I haven't done a live stream in such a long time. But as when you're just starting out, like when you start, the it gets better. Yeah, because then you don't focus on what you're doing and then you forget that you were, you were actually um, nervous. What inspired you to open a YouTube channel? Um, I was I was so into like back in the days we had what um uh, we had so many beauty channels. I also call them a clay channels. And I felt like I also want to share, share my ideas because when I was doing my makeup back in the days, I was like pretending I was doing a tutorial on my makeup. And then I was like, okay, let's let's do something about it. And then I decided let's do something that I like. For example, DIY set back in the days. And I just wanted to like, share my ideas. And that's how it started. Have you ever tried Arteza products? I tried their watercolors um, pens and I don't think, I don't, I think I didn't like them because then I would have used them because I felt so chalky to me. What is your most favorite art piece you made? That's a good question. It depends. Sometimes, sometimes I create something and I don't like it. And then I, ages later, I look at it and I'm like, wow, it's actually not that bad. Um, well, I like these popsicle, this, this lolly, these lollipops. Um, and also my acrylic pore painting, this one with um, this lilac, no, it was, I think it was green, turquoise, aqua. Um, it was very beautiful. I like that. It was, because it was such a, this acrylic pouring is so, you can't really plan it um, much. You just need to, it's very abstract. And you just need to let it go out of it. You don't, you can't control it much, and it turned out so pretty, and so, and I really like it. Um, <clears throat> so my voice is slowly fading. So I think um, I, we should definitely do more collabs. Uh, collabs. I mean, more more live streams because I see collab. Please collab. I should do more live streams because it's fun. But next time, can uh, not only see my hands, but I can show myself we could connect um so thank you so much for hanging out with me if you have more questions you can always reach out on instagram facebook um twitter comments community tab. the community tab is more difficult to check but comments um so yeah thank you so much for hanging out with me i really hope you enjoyed these paintings and if you followed along and painted something these paintings or something else 
share this with me. I would love to share it on my Instagram. Um, yeah, thank you so much for hanging out with me. Have a wonderful day. Stay home, stay safe. Um, and yeah, I hope we will get through these times together. And um, I can appreciate a lot, like everything that we can do right now a lot more. I feel, I hope the world will change to the better. So yeah, uh, thank you so much. Have a wonderful day, evening, morning, and I will see you in my next video on social everywhere. Stay safe. Bye, guys.